Hello and uh, welcome back. In this lecture, I want to talk about impact load. What happened an object like, say, let's look at this example. This is a, a, some type of a unit on top of a roof and somehow punches hole through the roof and falls into the floor. And say the floor beam is a W12 by 65 and the thing weighs about 2,000 pounds. What would happen? We're going to calculate the impact load. And, um, but before I want to do this problem, I want to tell you how important this deflection is. Why if deflection is important. So before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, lateral problem. And that kind of gives us an idea why the uh, uh, deformation is so important in impact load. Um, years ago, I built a lot of um, crash cushion impact attenuator on a highway uh, for vehicle accident. And the example I want to bring out so I can show you how important the deflection is, I had one incident that uh, was a vehicle hit one of those impact attenuators. I had many of them, but we're going to go ahead, evaluate one of those, and kind of give us an idea why this is so important. So come on, let's go for a ride with me. Uh, uh, impact attenuator right here. A few years ago, I investigated an accident. Uh, a pickup truck hit this impact attenuator at 65 miles an hour. When I spoke to the driver, the driver told me that uh, when he, by the time he looked up, it was too late and hit the unit. He walked away without any scratch, no problem at all, and his vehicle was basically uh, demolished. The thing is, when a moving object created an impact force, the impact force created the energy, and the energy. Uh, slows down the moving object over the uh, distance and that distance is very important that distance uh, um, what basically saved the driver's life and we're gonna go ahead and analyze what that distance is and how important that is this measurement was to be okay, 15 17 feet As you can see from the picture, the uh, impact attenuator that was here, which we got replaced with this one, it deflected, uh, retracted about 17 feet. And that distance was where the driver basically got saved. Let's do it here. Let me make a draw here. So the Ford pickup truck, uh, if you Google it, the weight of the Ford pickup truck was uh, 4,400 pounds. Going at the velocity of... Uh, 65 mile per hour and if we multiply that by 1.47 that makes it to 95.5 feet per second that's what we need so the vehicle was 4400 pound and it was traveling at 95.5 feet per second and the driver told me it looked up it was too late it hit the impact attenuator at that speed. So that's the, and we know the energy from physics is equal one half mv squared. Now the average force the, of the impact is calculated by F is equal one half mv squared divided by the distance. So at the time of impact, the total energy is transformed to a strain energy. And this strain energy, the moving objects, it comes to a stop over a certain distance. That distance is usually called crumple zone, deformation, deflection. So that distance is, the S distance is important. So when the vehicle crashed in and we looked at the pickup truck, the front end of the pickup truck, it was about uh, 1.6, about, about 18 inches almost, 18, 9, 20 inches had deflected it just kind of crumpled in and uh, that was just the pickup truck itself so let's calculate what happened if that pickup truck hit a concrete wall so if it hit a concrete wall for example saying okay the deflection only was and that the crumple zone of the pickup truck was about 
20 inches or 1.67 feet crushed in. So uh, one half, M is uh, 4,400 pound. Gotta watch our unit here because this English system kind of is difficult with these type and multiply by uh, V was 95.5 feet per second. And that has to be squared. And the next thing we're going to do divided by the distance and the distance, that's a feet. So there was, say it was 1.67 feet, the uh, pickup truck uh, front end kind of crushed, kind of uh, deformed. So that's going to come out to 12,039,276 pound per feet square. But because this is in the English system here, we got to divide it by the gravitational force, which is in English is. 32.2 and in metrics is about 9.8 meter per second. So let's go ahead and divide this number. Uh, F is equal 12039276 divided by 32.2 and uh, that will give us and divide the whole thing by 1000 to make it a kip. That give us 372 kips. When a vehicle hit the impact attenuator and the front of the vehicle went in about 1.67 and the total force that created was 372 kips. Assuming the object hit, it did not deform. But as you, as you can see, um, the object did deform and I measured it, it was 17 feet. So now let's do the same thing, just uh, divided by uh, uh, 17 feet plus this. So now if it's going to come out to uh, one half 4400 times 95.5 square divided by uh, 1.67, uh, I lied, well, I, not really. So it will be um, 17 plus 1.67. And um, then take this number again, instead of going through this, divide them by uh, 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 32.2, make it a kip. Basically what I did, I just skipped it right here. So that comes out to 3,000 pound or kips. So now we have that here. So let me make a divider here, going back there and uh, the gravitational force of the vehicle itself is m times g mass time acceleration, but because we're doing the pound, that's the same as 4,400 pound. So that's how much the vehicle weighs. The uh, Federal Highway did a lot of um, research on this and uh, NASTA, NHSTA, they decided, they said, you know, the ratio of uh, impact load compared to this, if it's over 60 to 65, you're not going to walk away from it. The driver told me he walked away from the accident without any harm, and we found out why. So when he hit the impact attenuator, the total force came out to 33,000 pound. So if I take 33,000 pound here, which is a kib, and divided by 4,400, that comes out to 7.5, which is way less than 60 or 65. So no harm done. However, if the driver, luckily he didn't, if he hit the uh, uh, concrete wall and the only deformation was in the vehicle, not on the concrete, it would have been 372,000, which is a kib, divided by 4,400, and that is and that is 85, which is more than 60. Because this number is so much greater than 65, the uh, probability of uh, personal injury and even to be in fatal, it's very highly high. And this is the number they looked at. So this is telling you how important it is when an ob moving object and hits the, uh, uh, another object and how much deformation exists between two objects, even the object itself that's going to move in or the object is uh, it's stationary. 
And this is one way approximately we can convert this to a kip, assuming a lot of stuff that we have assumed right here. And uh, we can, a lot of time you can take this number and use them for like a bridge design. As you can see on a, a picture here, you can see a lot of time a vehicle hitting a pier, and how can we design a pier to uh, uh, withstand this massive uh, impact? For example, the uh, tractor trailer engine uh, impact load, it can be almost to 600 kips. And a cargo itself could be anywhere from 500 to 2,000 kip, and that's a lot of force And how we're going to uh, design something like that. Of course, that's for future video we design a pier to withstand something uh, massive impact like that. So let me erase this and uh, we're going to go ahead and do this problem. So now we know the importance of the deformation during the impact, how much it's going to reduce the uh, force itself and we're going to go ahead and try to do this example. So taking a look at this example, assuming we have uh, uh, either from the uh, crane dropping something or there's something on a roof and somehow went through the f uh, roof and it landed on a, a floor beam. How are we going to calculate that, calculate the impact? Years ago when we did design and if we worry about the impact load, we usually double the life load and that was per code. But you can't use that, that's kind of dangerous because this is much different. And you really have to go through something like this and of course, we're doing this based on certain um, assumption also, assuming that the object that uh, uh, falling, it will not deflect, will not deform. We can't really predict a lot of things here. So let's say this solid object is going to come in at the height of 10 feet and it's going to impact on a beam. How are we going to do that? Luckily, we have an a impact factor. Uh, we can use that to calculate that. So we just calculate basically the uh, uh, our uh, bending moment because we know beam can fail by bending moment and then we can uh, calculate the uh, deflection and then use the uh, impact factor to kind of bring it a little bit closer to see what we're looking at so let's get to work here i'm going to just go ahead and do the static analysis assuming this 2000 pound is just based on the top of the beam bay itself let's calculate the deflection based on this 2000 pound and then calculate the bending moment based on this 2,000 pound. I'm going to first calculate deflection. We're using a deflection equation from the ASC table you can see on a board, and that is a PR cube divided by uh, 48 EI, and which is equal, P came out to 2,000. Let's go with, because these are the kips, so we're going to go use two kips. Time length was, uh, Let's say this is a 40 feet. So time 40 feet by 12 meter an inch by power 3 and divide that by 48, 29,000 KSI and moment inertia came out to 553. 553 inch by power 4 that's not a good looking tree. There you go. So it's equal 0.287 inch. Just for curiosity, see what is L over 240 or L over 260. And that is basically 40 times 12 divided by 240. That's about 2 inches. Let's find the maximum moment due to the uh, 2,000 pound. We need that for a bending moment. That comes out to PL divided by 4, which is equal 2,000 times, well, let's make that to a kip. Start a little bit, okay. 2 kip time 40, make that by an inch. Divide that by 4, and that comes up 240 inch kip. So bending says comes out to be uh, MC over I, and we got 240 
inch cap times C, it's a I beam right here. So, and a halfway is a D divided by two, which is 12.1 divided by two, and divide that by a uh, moment inertia came out to 553. That comes out to 2.62, that's an uh, inch for, so become KSI. And that's way less than 50 KSI FY, which is fine. I mean, that beam can stand a lot bigger than that concentrated load, not a big deal. However, what happens when you have a bang? I calculate the, uh, uh, the uh, factor that we're going to multiply this to. Take a look at the table. KD is equal 1 plus square root of into 1 plus square root of uh, 1 plus 2 times time 12. Make that an inch. And the delta came out to 0.287. And this comes out to 29.94. If I multiply my factor based on the impact load, so that means my deflection going to come out to deflection after impact, come out to 29.94, multiplied by uh, 0 0.287. And that gives me 8.6 inch, which is way bigger than 2 inches. And we know that's a. Uh, on a floor beam, that's big no-no. So let's find out what is our stress going to come out. So the stress going to come out if it be of impact, it's going to be 29.94 times uh, 2.62, and that's equal 7080.44 ksi, which is bigger than 50, and. Uh, it's going to fail the beam. This is how it's done. Of course, based on those assumptions, I uh, hope this was useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Have a good day.